I'd like to talk to you now about uh, the ticking of your biological clock and what you can do to preserve your fertility. You know, in the modern era that we live in right now, uh, most women prefer to put off childbearing until they're in their late 20s, their mid 30s, maybe even their early 40s. In the old days, uh, we used to get pregnant when we were in our late teens or early 20s and uh, infertility was not a huge problem. But right now, infertility is a gigantic worldwide epidemic and mostly because our life is so complicated and so enriched these days uh, that uh, we really aren't ready to have children until we're older and by then we have to worry about our biological clock ticking away and will we be able to have children in our later years when we want children in our late 20s or or in our 30s what what can we do to protect ourselves from becoming part of the infertility statistic that's just rampant worldwide so i'm going to show you you know a series of slides and images and even some videos to talk about this because you can solve this problem you you can preserve your fertility and uh save your uh fertility for a l much later date so first let me let me tell you about the infertility epidemic and uh, it, it's worldwide uh, almost in every developed or developing country in US in Europe China India all over the world the number one reason for going to see a doctor for a new doctor visit is infertility not heart disease or diabetes or lung disease but simply infertility. It's just absolutely incredible. And this has all occurred in the last 40 years. In fact, about 25% of all women of childbearing age who currently want to have a child are infertile. So, in fact, I'll, I'll quote here from an article I just wrote, the real reason for the anticipated insolvency of Social Security in the United States is that although people are living to an older age, many are not having children. So infertility is a raging epidemic that is not only a threat to uh, individuals who want to have children, but it's a threat to the well-being of our entire society, not just to those uh, couples that desperately want to have children. So the major reason for this worldwide infertility epidemic, and I, I'm going to go into that now if you'll just look at these slides with me. Uh, let's look at what the incidence of infertility is according to the age of the wife. Now, in her early 20s, about 1% of women are infertile. Uh, for teenagers, it's even less than 1%. But by the time you're in your late 20s, 16% of women are infertile. Now, most women who decide to have children these days, say at age 28, figure they're beating their biological clock because they're going to go ahead and try to have children before they hit their 30s, and, and they figure that they have maybe a, uh, a head up on uh, girlfriends who really aren't interested in trying to have children until they're in their 30s. But the truth is that you already have a 16-fold drop in fertility by the time you're in your late 20s from when you were in your early 20s. Now, when you're in your mid-30s, almost 25% of women are infertile. Uh, and actually, uh, if you just look at this chart, we, uh, this is a term I won't necessarily bring up now called aneuploidy, but the point is that there is a relationship between the woman's age, uh, the chance of her being infertile, the risk of having a miscarriage when she does get pregnant, and in fact, the risk of having that terrible uh, uh, dilemma of having a child with Down syndrome, which all women in their late 30s who get pregnant worry about. And if you look at the chart, what you realize is that infertility and even miscarriage is very uncommon in uh, women that are in their late teens or early 20s. But uh, as you hit age 30, already 16% uh, of women are infertile and almost 15% of pregnancies end in miscarriage. And then by the time you're 40, about 30% of pregnancies end in miscarriage, and over 50% of women by age 40 are infertile. And then Down syndrome, that's trisomy 21. 
uh, mental retardation problem. Uh, we begin to worry about that at age 35, but it's only about, say, one out of 500, but then it goes up so that by the time you're age 45, if you do get pregnant and deliver, there's a 6% chance of that child having Down syndrome. All these phenomena that increase with age are related to the fact that your eggs are getting older as you get older. So what about if we uh, do IVF and we put them through treatment? Even so, you realize that the pregnancy rate goes down even with in vitro fertilization the older you get. And uh, so even if you're able to afford to have in vitro fertilization when you're in your mid-30s or late 30s, by that time, your chance of pregnancy, even with in vitro fertilization, is somewhat lower than w when you were younger, say in your early 20s or mid 20s. And the risk of miscarriage goes up as you get older. And all of these graphs are related to changes in the chromosomes of your eggs as you get older. So let me explain this uh, a little more clearly. But, of course, first, let me preface it by saying we have a solution to this problem. So I, I'm painting a dire picture, but I don't want you to be frightened by this picture because we have a solution, a fantastic solution to the problem. But first, I want to make you aware of the problem. So by age 40, about 60% of women are infertile, and by age 43, it would be a rare woman who is still fertile. And this dramatic drop-off in fertility with just moderate increases in age are caused by the aging of the woman's eggs. Now, women would have no difficulty getting pregnant and having children in their 40s or 50s, except simply for the fact that their eggs are older, or they may have even run out of eggs completely. So let me explain that. A woman is normally born with about 2 million eggs, and she's not going to make any more eggs. And by the time she's a teenager, she has about 400,000 eggs left in her ovaries. Now, a 1,000 eggs die every month inexorably. There's nothing you can do to stop that. Taking birth control pills doesn't slow that down, uh, and even taking fertility pills doesn't speed it up. In other words, there is a hormone-independent death of a 1,000 eggs every month, or 30 eggs every day, that you can't do anything about. It's just inexorable, you can't help it. So about 13,000 eggs a year die, and you get to ovulate, uh, say, about 400 eggs in your lifetime. Uh, and uh, by the time you're in your 40s, you've run out of fertile eggs. So those 400,000 eggs that you had as a teenager are usually depleted by your late 30s or early 40s, and about 10 years later, after you've lost your fertility, that's when you go through menopause. In other words, you still have a few eggs holding on, and you're still menstruating, but you've lost your fertility, and about 10 years later is when you have your menopause or your change in life and you stop having periods altogether.